Good morning, stovepipers. Cheers. Today, Monday morning, uh, because we don't have the parts to complete this steam stack, I'm going to start uh, doing some other bits and bobs regarding the boil kettle to make life a little bit easier on a brew day. And one of those things is creating a mount at the side of the plate heat exchanger for the pump to sit on and once that's off the ground we can then begin to install the recirculation pipe work which is something I've been meaning to do for a long time that will then allow me to get rid of all of the uh, silicon hoses for the product side which means no danger of a burst pipe and then scalding during a brew day not so bad with the HLT because we generally don't run that hotter than 80 degrees C anyway which can, although it can scold you um, it's under much less pressure on these Keg Kingdom pumps so it's not a big issue really for me it's just always been the product side it can be a little bit scary when you've got a big old pump powering that round at sort of 2 or 3 bar and uh, it's boiling sugar inside there frankly so we'll get some mounts fabbed up today, have a look how they sit, dry fit them and then see if we can't begin to cut some stainless steel pipework for the product. So we won't want to go back into the uh, top port here, out of the pump, into here, we've got to get out of the pump into the, um, into the chiller and then out of the chiller into there. So there's going to be a selection of valves and T's and then also we want to go from there to the spray ball on the top so we can recirculate caustic as well and out of the base into the pump so it's quite a lot of pipe work to think about it's just how do we tee it all together and get it working is the big question suck it and see I guess benefits of learning to TIG weld is that you can do all this pipework fabrication in-house and that then allows you to pick up minor um, mistakes or errors in the design before you continue to weld up all of the pipe. For instance, we have a bowl valve here coming out of the uh, main supply for uh, recirculation and that's going to tee into 
the valve for the CIP and the uh, full drain from the base of the cone. Which is fine, that's all going to work nicely. And then to get that pipe work into the pump, which we've mounted already on the, uh, on the plate chiller, I've welded up this little piece of pipe work here, just a couple of bends to drop us straight in. And whilst I was doing this, I noticed that the pump is sitting a little bit high on the tank, meaning I'll probably have to put something like 50 litres of cleaning solution in there which frankly is a waste. We can get away with between 15 to 20 litres. So that means I'm going to cut this pipe down by about five inches and then we'll take this bracket off here that we put the pump on and we'll drop that by about five inches as well to bring all of the pump and all of the pipe work as low down on that cone as possible to save on cleaning fluids. Whereas if I'd have designed this on paper, that's probably something I wouldn't have spotted. So we're getting on for half past six in the evening. I've got a staff meeting at seven o'clock tonight just to run over a few things. That's the only reason I'm staying late. I am absolutely freezing though, so I'm gonna have to go into the pub just to warm up a little bit. But before that, before I go for the day, let's run across the uh, pipe work that I've put in. It's not exactly how I wanted it, but to save on buying bends or anything at the moment, because we're broke after spending money on these tanks, I thought, uh, just for the time being, I'll just weld some 90s into the pipework, and it seems to have worked quite well. So let's just flip the camera and have a look. There we go, so this is the pipe feed for the pump. So, both the bottom outlet and the side takeoff feed directly into the pump filter which protects the pump obviously from any large particulates getting in there. So you can see that we've just fetched the bottom out of the tank, across through that valve, up and then we're onto a concentric reducer and a 90 and then across here it tees in for the side takeoff as well. Um, and then in there into the pump. So tomorrow's job will be taking it out of the pump and then it'll go two ways. It'll go to the right and into the product uh, feed for the plate chiller and then it will also come up across here and then it'll go into here for the recirculation uh, port. So there'll be a T there for that and then there'll be another T for the product out, which will also go into there. And then there'll be a bypass, which comes directly from the pump, comes off of this and into the spray ball at the top. So this is gonna be the complicated side of it all. And then obviously there's got to be a separate outlet also for us to attach the pipe to transfer across to the fermenters. So still quite a bit to be done in terms of the pipe work, but I think I'll have it done before we do any more welding. My spray, uh, before we do any more brewing. My spray nozzles never arrived today for the um, condensing chimney, which is down here on the floor at the moment, like a big giant Christmas candy cane. So uh, when that arrives, we'll continue with that part of the build. But for now, I'm borderline gonna start shivering to death. So I'm wrapping it up, folks. And we'll pick up ooh, tomorrow's freezing cold edition, Tuesday's vlog in the morning. We shall see you then. <laughs>